In this episode, we will be learning about Python's SQLite module. SQLite is a self-contained, serverless, config-free, transactional SQL database engine. You can, Python has included a method to work with it since version 2.5. In this episode, we will learn how to create a SQLite database, insert data, edit the data, delete some data, and also some basic SQL queries. Let's get started by creating a database. First, we need to import SQLite 3, which is the name of the module. Then we need to create a connection. 3.connect. And because it's a, this database is file-based, we just create the database file interactively or in memory. In this case, we're going to actually create a database file. You could name this anything that you like with any extension that you like. DB is just kind of a convention that I'm going to use. And then we'll use cursor. A cursor is what you use to interact with your database. So we create a little cursor to our database. And now we just need to execute some SQL to create the database. So we'll create a multi-line string. Use some SQL syntax. You create an album an albums table with a title column that's going to be text, an artist column that's going to also be text, and a release date that's going to be text, and a couple other items. All right. Now, SQLite actually has other types, like it's like uh, a date type or an integer type. But we're using text for convenience here. Anyway, this should have created a file called my database DB that you can now interact with in whatever folder that your Python shell is running in. Now we can move on to inserting data into our database. To insert data into a database with the SQLite module, we still have to use SQL code. So let's get started and get that done. So we're going to use our cursor to execute some more SQL. And we use the insert command into our albums database. And then you give it some values. So we want the name of the media, and the artist. And then you want a date. And the publisher. And then the file type. And one of those, execute. And I've got a little mistake in here. We need another right, little little apostrophe. There we go. Now we've inserted some data. And to make sure the data actually sticks, we have to make sure that we commit the data to the database. So you call connection.commit. And that'll commit it to your database. Now if you want to do a set of items instead of just one at a time, you can create a list of tuples much like this tuple that we have here, that's actually embedded in the string. It's not really a true tuple because it's in the string, but here I'll just show you something I've got handy to insert a bunch of stuff. So we have a bunch of albums, and you'll see that each tuple has the various items in it. So you've got your title, your artist, the release date, etc., etc. And then to actually add them all, you do cursor to execute many, not ex not just plain execute. And then we can do an insert into albums values. And in this case, we're going to use question marks for each item. And then the albums. And this just follows the database schema that is included with Python. It allows you to do stuff like this. 
So hit enter, and then we should be able to commit it. And now we just committed a bunch more data to our database. That was pretty cool. Now we're ready to go ahead and look at how to edit some of our records and delete records. Before we go on to learn about how to update the database, I want to show you how to check that your database actually contains anything. So we're going to start by showing you a quick and simple SQLite query. So let's create ourselves a new file because we want a new script. And we'll import SQLite like we did before. Create our connection. Oops. Got to make sure we import it correctly. Not connect. Database.tv. Make sure you always connect to the same database so you get funny results. And then we'll get our cursor. equals our connection dot cursor just as before now we get to our fun part where we create the SQL statement which is a select all from our albums database where the artist equals a question mark and then we just need to execute that we got a SQL I'm going to look for the artist red And then we're going to print out what, we, what the result was. So cursor, and in this case, we're going to fetch everything that has red in it as the artist name. Let's give this a try and see if it works the way we expect it to. Google test.py, and let's run this. Invalid syntax. Sorry about that, fellows. Print, save, and run. All right, so it did find it, and it printed out what it found, which happens to be one album. Okay, so now we know that that exists, so we can go ahead and learn about how to update our database. So we still should have a connection in here. And we should still have our cursor, because we just ran it. So let's do a SQL equals an update command. And we'll update our albums, and we'll set an artist equal to John Doe. And we'll set it where the artist is equal to red, so we can actually show you that something changed. All right, so now we just need to execute this command. And we execute this equal. And we commit the change. So now if we execute our SQL again from earlier, which I believe is still in there, Oops, we changed it. So let's go ahead and copy this one. We'll copy this and put it in our idle. Let's see. And then we're going to run this. Well, of course that doesn't work because we need to pass it the red command. This actually shouldn't return anything because red is, should be replaced. So now if we do our cursor dot fetch all, we shouldn't get any results, and we don't. So let's change this command to look for John Doe instead, and then do a fetch all. As you can see. The artist has been changed from red to John Doe. And now we know how to update our database one field at a time. All right, to delete an item, we just have to create another quick SQL item. In this case, 
Our little SQL command will be the delete command from albums where the artist is equal to John Doe, the one we just changed. So if we do a cursor.commit, or execute I mean, execute our SQL, you can see we got our cursor object back, and now we just commit it. And now we can go back up here and rerun our script to see if we got it. Oh, we have to change that script again, my bad. Okay, and grab that, execute that, and do the fetch all, and it returns zero. So we've successfully deleted the John Doe entry. Now we're ready to move on and learn about SQL queries to check over our data. All right, well, I've already shown you how to do a select all from artist where the artist is, but what if we just want to select everything? Normally you don't do this because if your database is huge, this will make your database basically crash or just take forever to return. But we know our database is super small, so we can go ahead and try this out. So we'll do a select all, I'll execute that, and then we'll do a fetch all. As you can see, it grabbed everything out of our database, which was only like four items. That was pretty cool. But what if you want to be really selective about what we look for in our database? We can do something like this. So let's change our SQL. And do another select all. On albums. This time we'll make the title like something. And we'll make it the with a percent sign, which is kind of a um, make sure I hit the percent sign, which is kind of a wild card. So in this case, we're going to select all items from the from the album where the title has the in it, basically. So now we run cursor.execute and our execute our SQL. And then we do a fetch all and see what we got. In this case, we got the end is where we begin and the good life. So we got two different albums. So that worked pretty much the way we expected it to. Now, if we want to do that first part and make it look nice, we can actually do, our, do something a little bit smarter. So let's go, go back and grab that SQL real quick. So use our SQL to grab everything, and then we're going to loop over it. So for, for row, in cursor dot execute. Actually, we're gonna change this a little bit. Wait, we'll get our own code. Select to code. Select row ID, comma. Star from albums, and then we're gonna order it by the artist. And then we're going to print the row. You have to make sure you use the right print command because this is Python 3. And that'll loop through. And I'll print out the row ID, which is 1, 2, and you'll see we deleted 3 and 4 and 5. So that makes it a little bit easier to read our read our database. So if there's a lot of a lot of um, items in your database, this could take a long time to print. Or you could actually tell your database to only return the first first hundred results really depends on how you want to do your SQL query. SQL by itself is a pretty powerful language, even if it is a simple language. And just so you know what I'm talking about, what the SQL is, is this part here in the, in the quotes. And technically, you don't have to make your SQL parts, the, the SQL commands, all in uppercase. That's just a convention that's used in most SQL languages. All right, at this point, you should be able to create your own database Insert data into it, edit your database, or just update it, uh, delete data from it, and do some very basic SQL queries. I hope you've enjoyed learning about SQLite, and I look forward to seeing you next time.